be a backup candidate to enter. This is consistent with the Cup Metro issues agenda on the accountability session of April 23rd. Most candidates have publicly supported our agenda, but we may have a few that haven't yet. Good evening. My name is Dr. Dolce Piper, and I am a disciple at Smoothine Church. A member of the San Antonio Sponsoring Committee, which is a broad based organization, and we, let, we are glad to stand with your organization and organize our vote for the upcoming runoff election with COPS and Metro Agenda. enough time on their own to campaign for themselves. This means we don't want to see any t-shirts, any flyers, any promotional material in support of any one candidate or another. So if you have on a t-shirt or a campaign material, please dispose of it now, turn your t-shirt on the other side. Please and thank you, please and thank you. This is our rally. Who's rally is this? Our rally, right? It is for us to ask the question and for us to rally our community in support of our agenda. When you all go to the theater, when you go to see a play, when you go to the theater to take your children to see a musical, you don't start clapping at the beginning of the production. You wait to see if the actors are any good before you give them a round of applause. That is exactly what we're going to do tonight. We are going to wait and see how our candidates perform before we recognize them. If they respond with a, in support of, with a vote of yes, then we applaud them. We give them our applause because they support the issues that our community feels is important. If they say no, some of them may say no, it's a strong possibility. Then we are respectful, we, be res we are respectful, we don't do, we show our non-support when we go out and vote. We vote for the candidates that are in support of the things that we believe in. We will follow the agenda in the order it's printed in order to conduct our public business so we can adjourn by 8 p.m. This evening, Lord is saying, check up will be our official timekeeper. Lord, would you, Lord is, would you please stand? Yeah. Now we get to get It's time to get this rally started. Yeah. If you agree with tonight's agenda, then stand and show me your agenda and signify that you are We are ready for business. Let's get our rally started. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the Cox Metro Get Out the Vote Rally. My name is Superintendent Godfrey Skura. I am pastor of the Dominion Church of God in Christ. I'm your host and one of your court chairs for this evening, for this evening. I hereby call this meeting to order. Jesus Christ, asking you, God, to forgive us 
all of our sins and the thoughts and deeds and anything God can hinder us from hearing from you in this place. Now, God, we thank you for our leaders and thank you, God, for these people that have gathered in your house, God, to do your business. So we pray, God, that you would just move in this place, fill candidates with wisdom and knowledge. Then, God, we pray that you would encourage each of us tonight to remain engaged and do the work of our Lord. We give you praise and glory even now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Price. Our focus statement tonight, tonight is not a campaign rally for any one person or personality. This is a get out the vote rally to create a more just city. We are focusing on where candidates stand on our concrete proposals that will enable our city government to be more ethical and even-handed to all of our citizens. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Prophet Habakkuk was also told by the Lord to write the vision and make it plain. The prophet was very much concerned about the social injustice of his day and was told by the Lord to write down the vision he had given him for his people, making sure that what he wrote would be plain enough for all to read and understand. The prophet was also told that even though the vision would tarry or take some time, that it would surely come to pass. We are here tonight to share with these candidates the vision we have for our city. Our vision includes the rehabilitation of owner-occupied housing that will significantly improve the east, west, and south sectors of San Antonio. We are focusing tonight on a living wage for the hard-working citizens of San Antonio so that all may share in joint prosperity. We are focusing on creating a city that is welcoming to all residents regardless of their immigration status. We are, we are focusing on the influence that every single person in this room has in their family, on their job, at their church, on their college campus, and even with the person sitting right next to them to convey the significance of how important their vote will be in this election. Tonight, we remind ourselves and each candidate that elections belong to the people. However, this is only true if we practice the essential right of voting. If we exercise our right to vote, to vote this up in, in this upcoming election, that it will not be determined by who contributed the most money to the campaign, but simply by the people who will show up to vote. Tonight, we commit to ourselves and each other to let San Antonio voters know where the candidates stand on our issues agenda. Tonight, we commit to get out the vote, to turn our vision into a reality, to create the city that we desire. The well-known author and leadership expert John Maxwell wrote that people tend to buy into the leader before they buy into the vision. This is why it is so important for each of these leaders who are vying for public office to be here tonight to answer yes or no to our questions and respond to the vision that we as citizens have for San Antonio. I read a quote today that said, you should never say maybe when you want to really say no. <laughs> However, before we ask these questions, any of these questions, there's a question we must ask ourselves. Are we going to show up to vote? Yeah. Why don't you take a moment and ask the people around you, are you going to show up to vote? All right. 
That means our emphasis for tonight's session and vision for this upcoming election is well into focus. We're going to turn up the vote. Denny, we're going to turn We will not have a roll call on complimentary institutions and their get out the vote commitments. These institutions will get out the vote according to how the candidates respond to our complimentary agenda. Please stand when you hear your institution's name. Greetings. My name is Reverend Josh Schneider. I'm the minister at the First Unitarian Universalist Church, located at the crossroads of San Antonio at the northwest intersection of Loop 410 and I-10. Based on our comprehensive agenda of issues, and our team is committed to turning out 700 voters. <laughs>
Project Quest is here. And in San Antonio. Are there any other guest delegations? We have Pastor Jared Daly, who is the chairman of the Community Churches of Social Action. Stand up. Any other, any other guest delegations? Thank you very much. On April 23rd, at St. Henry's, 750 top metro leaders laid out our agenda for a more just San Antonio. Two weeks ago, we won on our first issue when the city created a $150,000 legal defense fund for immigrants.
Susana Esparza will now address the general election winners. Esparza. Tonight we congratulate the officials who won outright the general election. In April, the four victors all committed to Hops Metro agenda. Tonight, Councilman Ray Saldana and Councilwoman elect Ana Sandoval are present. opportunity to share their plans for how they will implement Hops Metro agenda in the first 100 days of the new term. Ms. Menchaca will be the timekeeper. When you see the yellow card, you will have 10 seconds to finish your remarks. The red card means please stop talking. <laughs> I want to start with my councilman, Ray Saldana. Please come to I want to recognize your leadership in creating the $150,000 Legal Defense Fund. You championed the issue and worked with your colleagues in Cops Metro to make it happen. We look forward to you championing more issues from our agenda. Now, it wouldn't be a Cops Metro action if we failed to ask a yes or no question. Will you commit to working with us over the next two years? Yes or no? Yes. Will you support joining the suit, the, the suit against Senate Bill 4, the Anti-Sanctuary City Bill, as soon as possible? Yes. For the next 100 days to implement the rest of the Cops Metro agenda, you have one minute. All right, thank you. Good evening. I want to stop this. It's a real joy to be here after getting past the election. Now it's time to get to work. It's not about campaign uh, promises, it's about making sure that we're following through on our commitments. Let me just say this it's beautiful to see this on the east side. We keep saying all of the time that it's not about the people in power, it's about the power of the people. Yeah. <laughs> You all should be driving our agenda, and this is, the, this is the agenda, it's very simple. We need to recognize at a time that people are under attack, that the vulnerable are under attack, that your elected leaders need to step up, under attack from the federal government, under attack from the state, and I hope that our first piece of action is making sure that we're sending a strong statement to the state, that we, we, we're going to fight it with the legislature, but we're also fighting with the court to make sure that we're protecting those who are the voiceless in our community. So that's what we're committed to doing, not just on that legislation, but on the issues that come forward in the city council. So thank you guys for your work. I hope you guys can get out there and vote to make sure we're making our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman elect Anna Sandoval, please come to the microphone. We all remember that you were the only District 7 candidate to attend the April Accountability Session. And you won with a 50.79% of the vote in the incumbent. We look forward to working with you in your new position. Before you start, start before you share with us your 100 day plan to implement Cops Metro agenda. Please let us know if you commit to working with us over the next two years. Yes or no? Yes. We no! have a minute and a half, and we did give Tom Saldana the extra time, too. There was another question. Weren't there two actions? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for always knowing. Where the issues are. My name is Ana Sandoval. Buenas noches, buenas tardes. Eh, muy bonito ver a todos aquí en, on the east side. 
Um, thank you very much for all those of you who went out to vote uh, in the last, in the general election, and for those of you who, who supported me. But let me tell you, I only won the general election by 92 or 93 votes. Um, every vote matters. Yes. So I, I applaud you. I applaud the commitments you've made and the efforts you're going to make that were just up on this on this projector. So thank you. Please remember to uh, address how you will implement that agenda. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so number one, I am going to follow the, the lead set forward by by my future colleague, Councilman Santanya, and to continue working on these issues, not only in our city council, but building working groups and alliances with leaders in other cities. Because as one city, we're not going to be able to fight the state alone, the legislature alone. We need collaboration with the other cities as well to send that message. In the next... In the next few days, what I will be doing is recruiting and looking for the best, the most committed, and the most capable staff members that are committed to your issues and to our agenda as well. We will now hear from candidates in the runoff races. We have some yes and no questions for each of the candidates. We have some yes or no questions for each of the candidates. Questions were given to the candidates in advance and were printed on the back of your agenda. If a candidate gives a non-committal response, we must take that as a no. We are asking them to commit to Cox Metro's agenda. We are not asking them to commit to thinking about it. The council of candidates will be given one minute, 90 seconds, 90 seconds to speak. The mayor, the mayor candidates will be given three minutes. Again, Mrs. Nchaka will be the timekeeper. When you see the yellow card, you will have 10 seconds to finish your remarks. The red card means you stop talking. Councilman Robert Trevino and candidate Michael Montano, can you please step up? You both attended April 23rd accountability session of Raising Henry's. Do you still support Cox Metro agenda? Yes or no? Yes. Woo! Yes. Do you both commit to working with us over the next two years? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. In the first 100 days of your term, what are you going to do to implement the Cox Mentor agenda? You have one minute. We'll start with Councilman Trevino now. Oh, now you. Thank you. Well, uh, basically, it, it's, it's really more of the same. We're gonna, we want to continue to work with Cox Mentor. We want to implement a lot of the great programs that we've been talking about, as as my, my colleagues have mentioned before, and, and uh, Councilman elect reaching out bringing alliances together. We, we want to bring uh, more, much more voices to the table. We want to make sure that more people know that we all need to get together to, to fight fearful tactics that are being brought down by the state, by the federal government. And we, we will not stand for that. We want to make statements that, that we're a proud city, a proud, inclusive community, uh, a compassionate community that is going to make sure that we are proud of who we are and we will have policies in place that will uh, help to address all these concerns that we have are facing here today. And fear will not conquer us. Thank you. We're going to do what working people always do. And what my campaign shares in common with all the people in this room, as well as the 14 labor unions and democratic clubs that have endorsed me. We're going to go out and organize, not just in District 1, but in all the other districts. We need to build power for working people in this city. Right now, we have a city hall that the lobbyists, the construction companies, treat the way the money changers in Jesus' time treated the temple in Jerusalem. We need to call a stop to that. 
I believe, like you do, in what the letter of St. James says, and that is that faith without works is dead. All right. Amen, Amen right? So we're going to go out, do the organizing, build the coalition we need around the city of course, and also within city council. And we're going to create change, as Councilman Zodanio said, excuse me, as Councilman Zodanio said, uh, that builds power for the people. Thank you. Councilman Allen Ward, would you please come forward? Councilman Warwick, you attended the April 23rd accountability session. Do you still support Cox Metro's agenda? Yes. Do you commit to working with Cox over the next two years? Yes. If elected in the first 100 days of your term, let me ask this question. Will you support our city joining the suit against SB4 as soon as possible? Yes. <laughs> if elected in the first 100 days of your term, what are you going to do to implement Cox Metro's agenda? You have 90 seconds. Well, again, I've been a city council member since December 16th of 2014, so it won't be the first 100 days, but it'll be the next 100 days of my term. And what I'm going to do to work with House Metro is to allow for more uh, housing rehabilitation. We've done seven roofs on the east side of San Antonio and Denver Heights. Three roofs. Ten thousand dollars. And these people are living with things in their homes. These senior citizens, disabled people in our community are living in these conditions that they should not live in in our city, the greatest city in the country. And we need to make sure that this doesn't happen any further. So we're going to use some of the money from the uh, Public Finance Corporation in order to do more roofs throughout the entire east side. But there's more, there's more need than just Denver Heights. There's need in every neighborhood, in every part of the community, and we're going to work to make that happen. Before I go to the next candidate, uh, Councilman Trevino, I forgot to ask you that question. Do you support the city joining the suit against SB4? Yes. <laughs> Please come. Thank you. Sure, I'm here. You attended April 23rd in ability session, and at that time, you did support the customer for agenda. Uh, do you still support it? Thank you. Yes. Do you uh, also uh, commit to working with us over the next two years? Yes. Or no? yeah. Yes. Agenda, and you have uh, 90 seconds. I've knocked on thousands of doors of uh, residents of District 6, and I've seen uh, so many people that have, and have heard their stories telling me they've been there for 50 years and they can't afford to fix up their homes. I'm thinking about Mrs. Torres, who invited me to her home to see the, the hole in her roof as the, the rain came through into a bucket. I want to bring people like Mrs. Torres to City Hall. I want to, if I'm elected as their representative, I'm going to bring them in. We're going to hear their stories. Because it's very difficult for the other side to say no to Mrs. Lewis. Because she's been there a long time and she's going to stay there. She's proud of her neighborhood. She's proud of her roots. And I want to support her. I don't want to run her out. So that's number one. I'm going to bring the community to City Hall. Um, you know, also with the, the ID and the, and the legal defense fund, I happen to be an attorney. It's, it's where my heart is. You know, I want to make sure that we can take care of those things. Because people shouldn't be afraid to go to work when they're, they're undocumented. And get pulled over. And I understand there's a gentleman I know that quit his job because he's so afraid of getting pulled over. So we didn't take care of that ID situation very quickly.
he is not here. So we do not know where he stands on, his, on our issues at this time. So just uh, keep that in mind. I want to acknowledge that candidate. He also attended the April, April 23rd accountability session and he did agree to all of Cox Metro's agenda. Councilman Ron Nienberg, would you please come forward? Councilman Nierberg, you attended the April 23rd accountability session. Do you still support Cox Metro's agenda? Yes. Will you commit to working with Cox over the next two years? Proudly, yes. In the first 100 days of your term, what are you going to do to implement Cox Metro's agenda. You have three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. There is nothing more important uh, happening in our city next month than June 10th election. It will decide the future of this city and it will answer the question that so many people outside of this community are asking, which is, what kind of city is San Antonio? There are clear choices on your ballot for this election. And I'm here to tell you that we're going to work very hard during this campaign and we're going to work even harder to bring new leadership to the mayor's office. Leadership that makes sure that you know no matter what part of town you live on, no matter what you do when you got here, what your immigration status or your LGBTQ status is, you will be treated with respect and with fairness and dignity that every San Antonian deserves. We will get started. get started on a, an aggressive agenda because I'm so thrilled with some of the things that have been happening already this election to make sure that you know that you have San Antonio's back and San Antonio City Hall will have your back. We will get to work on building a compassionate and comprehensive housing policy to make sure that everyone has the dignity of a fair chance at aging in place and no one gets forced out of their homes just because San Antonio is doing the very basic that you deserve. We will make sure that we have a high standard not only for our city employees but also for every San Antonian family that shouldn't have to be underemployed working two and three and four jobs just to make ends meet. We will work to make San Antonio a living wage city. We will do the simple things that you expect from a modern city, like public transportation and parts of town that need it. We will bring that back to make sure that fairness is part of your city agenda. Yeah. We will work on economic development so that we bring great new jobs to San Antonio, but that local families that are building local jobs in San Antonio get a fair chance at the pie also. And we will and we certainly make sure that, bottom line, this city is built on a foundation of ethics and integrity and trust. Yeah. We will inform the ethics code to make sure that every San Antonio knows that when there is oversight, that means there is accountability. And that goes for every single public official, paid or unpaid, in your city hall. Yeah. And I will make it my mission just as I have when I go home at night after a long day to talk to my son and my wife, that when he grows up, he will have a city that no longer has to beg people to vote because they know their voice matters. And that when they go to a ballot box, they will ensure that they are building a bright future that all of us deserve. Thank you so very much. joining the suit against SB4 as soon as possible. Yes.
multiple times. She decided not to attend. She also decided not to attend the April 23rd accountability session. Last Friday, she did meet with Cub Metro leaders. She would not commit to any part of the Cub Metro agenda. She would not, she would not commit to increasing owner-occupied rehab funding. She would not commit to raising wages or increasing Project Quest funding. She would not commit to a municipal ID. We are firstly nonpartisan and never endorse a candidate. But we do tell our constituency which candidates are in support of COP's metro agenda.
turn out the 9,000 voters we committed to deliver. Turning our vision for San Antonio into reality means that over the next three weeks, we must block walk, phone back, and anything else we need to do, including preaching, <laughs> to get out of the road that we do this, our vision and our agenda of shared economic prosperity, affordable and dignified housing, and welcoming the stranger will forbid. Are you ready to do that? Metro's leaders, please come to the conference room for an evaluation. The next Cops Metro leaders meeting will be on June 19 at 7 p.m. Except the Lord build the house. Except the Lord keep the city. Or watch the weekend. This meeting is adjourned.